This is Coach Chris Holtman. You're listening to Drive the Lane Podcast. Here we are once again after the college football playoff selection show. We know where the Buckeyes are. We know where they'll be playing. We know who they'll be playing. We'll talk about all that. We'll talk some Ohio State basketball after maybe the most dominating week in Ohio State basketball this decade, perhaps, two blowouts, and we interview legend status, Thad Mata, Joey's former coach, the gum-chewing champion of the world. But before all that, High Street Tees, we got a special secret coming soon, Drive the Lane shirts, going to be a perfect Christmas gift, but right now, you can go to highstreettees.com slash DTL. You can get all the awesome shirts that they have on there. You know, they got Mama's Passing Brew, RIP, Me and Mr. Mustards. You know, they got their new holiday bucket that you can get, which is just tons of awesome stuff. And we're going to save you some money by doing that. You're going to enter our promo code, DTL15. Joey, what percent are you going to get off on your order? 14%. Add another percent. Oh, my God. 15%. You guys are so lucky. 15% off your order on highstreetees.com slash DTL, promo code DTL15. We have a shirt coming soon that's going to be available for purchase because we do not give away things for free, but we do give discounts. DTL15. 15%. Drive the Lane podcast, part of the Letterman Row network. Buckle up, and let's drive the lane. All righty. What a week it's been for Ohio State Athletics. What a week it's been for Drive the Lane, because we probably have our greatest interview since the podcast's inception. I don't even want to say probably. We do. Conception, not Inception. Conception, yeah. Inception yeah. movie with Leonardo I, DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> moving on. Um, we're going to be brief in this beginning uh, part of the podcast because we want to get to um, the interview with Coach Mata. We know that's why you guys are all here, but uh, we can't just brush over the fact that Ohio State's the greatest university to ever play sports ever. Yeah. I, I want to go on and say this. Since Florida – when they beat Ohio State in both sports that one year. This is probably the best the university has been sports-wise since then. You could argue Oklahoma when they went to the Final Four with Buddy Heald and went to the playoff, but... This or, U- is, or Utah when they had, but that was probably before. That was probably Bogan before. But this, Smith, this, this is pretty impressive. I mean, just dismantling UNC and dismantling Penn State... In basketball, yeah. but before we even get to that, <laughs> let's talk football. The Buckeyes are number two in the college football playoff. Which is what I, I watched the show with my mom. God bless her soul. She was so mad that we were number two. It was honestly me and my dad were like trying to talk her off the ledge, but it makes <laughs> sense. I mean, like unbiasedly, like LSU had a had a better showing in this past week, and obviously it was really really close the past couple of weeks. So that's why they had been flip flop flip flopping, leapfrogging each other, and. I have no problem being two. It just stinks that we have to play Clemson. But people, Oklahoma's not an easy game either. So what? Yeah. I mean, there's I'm no very difference. As long as we don't have to play LSU, I'm fine. Right. It's fine. I'm you gotta, ve- you got to beat a good team to win anyway. I mean, I'm very yes. content with number two because I want to beat Clemson yeah, as part of Clemson. this historic run that they are uh-huh. going on. And something that's not Ohio State related, but it kind of is, that's very cool. Jalen Hurts. And Justin Fields are in the playoff with their new teams. Alabama and Georgia, not in the playoff. So let me tell you who made the right choice. Those two fine gentlemen. Yeah. I mean. And and another guy who left his school and is in the playoff. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. But Ohio State is still in. It's crazy. Four, three transfers are are starting in the playoff. And then Trevor Lawrence. And then also Kelly Bryant at Mizzou. (laughs) Oh, no, no. Transferred from clubs. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But, yeah, so, obviously, LSU, Oklahoma, I think that's going to be a better game than people are saying. Yeah, I don't know. It's the, I it's don't the know. playoff. I, yeah, and it doesn't seem like LSU can stop anyone. So No. It's good. First to 50 wins. Except they shut down Georgia. No, first to, but Georgia doesn't have a great offense. First yeah. to 50 wins. So, and then the R game. I, I mean, R game. 60 wins. Clemson, Ohio State, is going to be a good game. 
what the early line was what Ohio State minus one. Ohio State minus one. I think it's moved to two. It might have now moved to Clemson. It's gonna it's gonna go back and forth. It's gonna waver. It's a prime time game. I think. Oh, that's. I'm I'm not nervous. It's just like because if we lose that game, it's like. Okay. There, there's no way they win the championship if they lose that game. <laughs> <laughs> I saw people on Twitter saying, you know what? Like, honest to God, like I think Ohio State is a lock to be in the playoff. <laughs> yeah, me too. After that, that win so, yesterday, that was so I was. And then when the results came out, they would, like, quote, tweet that tweet and be like, see, told you. <laughs> did you see what Brutus posted today? No, what did Brutus he, post? He posted a video. You think he did like, it himself? Yeah, with his uh, mascot fingers turned to Twitter fingers. He posted a video of, like, Stephen A. Smith laughing at the ESPN FPI stuff that said that they were going to finish fourth in the Big Ten and that they had the 12th best odds to make the playoff. Yeah, I did see a couple things that were, like, TBT, even though it's Sunday, and they were like uh, – well, I say there's a 4.5% chance to win the Big Ten. Like, mm-hmm. obviously. I, do you yeah. think they're going to win it? I think there's a 100% chance they win the Big Ten. <laughs> and then and then they were like, yeah, Ohio State is 15th preseason and chances to make it to the college football. Play. Like, just insanity, but it's whatever. I'm uh, going Ohio against the world. I'm going to give you my prediction right now. Ohio State beats Oklahoma Whoa, in the national no championship. LSU versus Ohio State. They will fix LSU it. LSU has they will seen- fix it so that happens. LSU has not seen an that. offense like Jalen Hurts in Oklahoma and CeeDee Lamb. You yeah. say whatever you want. They will fix You see whatever you want about half. It will be fixed. Half strength to a. It will be fixed. And that Alabama team. It will be fixed you so are, that Joe Burrow plays You are Ohio looking State. at an Ohio State, It'll be fixed. Oklahoma <laughs> national championship. It will be fixed so that Joe Burrow <laughs> plays Ohio State. I literally have. It's either Joe Burrow is going to play Ohio State or Oklahoma is going to play um, Clemson. There's no... That's only those. That's what about team. Clemson LSU? No, no, that's not an option. It would Ohio because they want Ohio State and LSU to play in the third place game afterwards. True. I bet Ohio State will rest their guys in that third place game, though. Yeah, I bet both teams will rest their guys in that game. How fitting! Chase Young sealed the deal. Yeah, I. Yeah, I guess our I, interns tweeted that. S- some of the um, the replays and pictures of him getting held and stuff was so funny. But he's still the most dominant player. I think he actually will get – officially he'll get invited to New York, which is kind of cool. I think I'm going to stop, like, bull, like bullshitting about this. I I do sports gamble. Okay, breaking news. Oh, my gosh. Breaking, breaking news. news. Bre- breaking news. When Ohio State was down 21-7 at half, free money. It was free money to take them second half to win. Yeah. Free Some money. Some would say that. Literally free money. You don't have to pay the bookie if you lose. Free money. Yeah. I've never, I don't pay my bookie when no. I lose. But no. I don't bet. So. Right. You don't bet. I do officially on record. I sports bet. Wow. If anyone wants to sponsor any, like, bet DSI or whatever those things are called, that would be a fun sponsor. Yeah. You guys are. Definitely a fun sponsor. Right, Speaking of sponsors, we have another one coming up before the interview. You'll see exclusive video content, as you can see if you're watching. <laughs> uh but, yeah, let's get to basketball. Yeah. You're the basketball expert. You yeah, played on yes. the team, right? I did. Okay. Makes me an expert. Played the sport. You were there for the North Carolina beatdown. It was me and Scotty Lane. We were there. It's, it's, it's so sad when you have to put down a Tar Heel. It's really sad. It was, uh, first of all, Andre Wesson, and Caleb Wesson's parents were sitting next to me. They were like, Joey, what is a Tar Heel? And, you know, being the all-knowing expert that I am, I said, I don't know. It's probably similar to a Hoosier. Someone who lives in North Carolina is called a Tar Heel. Look it up. That's exactly what it was. It's a type of ram, isn't it? Stop. Their mascot's a ram. That doesn't mean... Mm, I think it's a type of ram. I mean, we looked it up, but anyway. That's uh, that's the... You know what uh, I think it is? I think it's someone who walks through, like, tar. That's what I said, too. tar on their foot. That's what I said, and then I was like, it's probably just someone who's from North Carolina. I looked it up, and it's... uh, Our intern's actually looking it up right now. And oh wow! The verdict is Tar Heel n- given to someone in the U.S. state of North Carolina. It's also the nickname of the University of North Carolina. But also funny that we well, the said, logo is funny that we said the Tar Heel thing because co- that's I don't their know if logo. You've never seen. This is like the secondary logo though. The logo is mean? like the like I'll look that's up North the logo Carolina that's on logo. their shorts. Um, anyway, yeah, no, this is the logo. Is Ohio, state. that's the logo. That's the cla- the classic logo with the N and the C. Which le- which do you think is on top? Which letter? The ends on top. Because the end comes first. Embrace debate. Um. Anyway, um. Yeah. Ohio State was. They just dominated that game from from start to finish. I mean, the score wouldn't indicate it at halftime that they were dominating, but they were dominating. I tweeted at halftime like, you know, am I allowed to be mad up to in a top ten matchup on the road? And it was because we turned the ball over a little bit, missed some easy shots, like left Cole Anthony open. Anyway, Cole we, Anthony, give credit where credit is due. That boy is good. 
That kid is good. Yeah, he's great. He he's awesome. Anything super spectacular. In our, in he got hot moment. for a second, and he, then they everyone just everyone can take make over. some shots. I trust me. Cole Anthony is awesome. He's going to be a top five pick. You would have been playing if you were on North Carolina in that game. I know. I would. Not only would I have played eight minutes on North Carolina, I would have played seven minutes on Ohio State. So, um, I, I, whenever I talk to my coaches, like after that game too, because I went in the locker room after, and and I was like, you know. Coach Nettie, Mike Nettie, was like, hey, Joe, this is my Nettie impersonation, you guys don't even know. Hey, Joe, you, you would have been out there playing seven minutes, man. How about that? You know, and that's really, really good if you if you know Mike Nettie. But, uh, um, yeah, I uh, could have – how many games has it been? Eight, six, whatever, seven, eight? You would have played in – I would have played in a lot of Almost every game. And I would have set my career high in minutes just in eight games probably because I would have been – like Danny Hummer's played in ten minutes in like three different games. Danny Hummer – Looks like he's seventy six years old. Well, he's older than he's older than me. He's an old man. Yeah, he took a year after school to go to prep school, and then he transferred. So that was another year. So he's turning twenty four. He's entering Dockage territory in terms of how old he is. Someone, obviously, we played Penn State also and beat the brains off of them, which is awesome because Penn State's my arch rival because they stole a Big Ten championship ring away from from my left ring finger. But um, um, <laughs> um. <laughs> So it's always great to beat Penn State, but they, we beat them really, really bad. I already I lo- forgot what I was going to say now because I s- made a funny joke. That you hate Penn State. Oh yeah, the the because I was talking about Dockage. Um, the announcers or someone tweeted, um, and said, uh, the last time, uh, the last time Ohio State scored a hundred points in a Big Ten game, Andrew Dockage wasn't even born, so you know it was a really long time <laughs> ago. <laughs> and that Dockage's suit game is incredible, right? Yeah, now. I know. I I give him some credit because I told him I said, look, like. You just are below average in terms of swag on the bench and stuff, and he's absolutely stepped it up. So yeah, he's been great he's see. been looking good ever ever since we hung out with him. He's been looking good. Yeah, I mean it's not it's a direct correlation between our um, presence and uh, good things and happen swag. when you go. Hey, you know what? Not since we hung out with him. Since he came on the podcast, he's dressed very sure. well. Just yeah, yeah. come on the show. It's the dress well, bump. test well, play well, get signed to the Broncos practice squad, uh, go off against teams. Terry McCorn scored again today. Terry McCorn had the catch of the year. Drive the lane bump. Uh, drive the lane bump. It's real. Um, Drew Chrisman is a huge fan of the show, and he had that punt fake come on the show. Exactly. Yeah. We're gonna get him uh, soon. Right. Sure. When we win the national championship, we'll just get nine. We'll get nine, ten players for like three minutes each. And, yeah. The, <laughs> um, the football episode. Um, but um, yeah, Ohio State looks like they could literally be one of the top three teams in the country, not ranking-wise, but... No, they might be ranking-wise. Com- well, ranking-wise, too. They'll be at least four um, in terms of just completeness, like offense, defense. They don't really have a weakness, which is awesome. Um, C.J. Walker's been awesome. Kyle Young has been awesome. Caleb Lawson is one of the best players in the country, not just the Big Ten. It's been great. But there are other teams that have been impressive, besides, like, Michigan, who we don't really want to talk about. But, like, Louisville looks great. Maryland um, finds a way to win every single game. Speaking exactly. of Maryland... Illinois figures out a way to lose every single game, which is equally as impressive. Um, and people were so excited about Illinois, but told them to pump the brakes on them. I, I told them. Yeah, disab- i got to give credit to you. I said I was excited for, <coughs> for AO, IO, DeSudmo this season, and you said not going to be anything special. Yeah, so I you mean, called that one. I and I don't want to be <coughs> – like, I don't want to be okay? that – yeah, yeah, sorry. I don't want to be that sports, like, quote-unquote expert that's, like, so negative, but, like – you know, got to speak the truth and stuff. I just didn't see it from Illinois, and it was they're proving me right, which is great, all that good stuff. But uh, um, yeah, the the hoops team has been uh impressive to say the least. Almost impressive as my fantasy team has been. Um, uh, almost impressive as my car breaking down in the middle of a street today. Um, so yeah, so Hate you take it. you take the good with the bad. I sack my car sack made a sacrifice. For Ohio State, for Ohio athletics. State basketball, Ohio State basketball, Ohio State football, Ohio State athletics. Shout out to the women's basketball team who beat. Um, number two ranked Louisville um, at home this past week. Also, everything's coming up, Buckeyes. Yeah, I mean it's just my car. You shout out to my car for sacrificing itself to, for the good of um, the podcast and Ohio State in general. Uh, something that I wanted to point out is that this team, Ohio State, going in and beating North Carolina at North Carolina, reminds me of when Ohio State went in and beat Duke at Duke. Yeah, that's a, you're you're. Aging yourself, it's a long and time. And who ago. is the who is the coach of that team? Hmm. We actually have him on the on the podcast. Oh, we do. Coach we have Mata. him as a guest. Yeah, so, Coach Mata. So I think that it was the win against UNC was reminiscent more of when we went and beat Wisconsin my junior year by thirty um, in the first Big Ten game of the year. Yeah, but Mata wasn't the coach, right? But just you brought that up. 
UNC is not going to be as good as they are. Wisconsin wasn't the typical Wisconsin team that year. But winning on the road, doesn't matter how you do it, is always impressive. And then to win by a billion like we did both of those times, I mean, it's just like it's ridiculous. But you'll see UNC is not good. They have no talent. Their big guy's going to be out for a really, really long time. I think they're playing Virginia right now. I bet you the score is 10 to 10 with three minutes left in the game. It was very low scoring. Yeah, I'm going to look that up right now. All right, while you look that up, I'll do a little Mata intro. How's that sound? Sure, yeah. So, our interview with Dad Mata, we've been planning yeah, to release. Yeah, it's 47-35 with 10 minutes Virginia, left in the game. Virginia, after Virginia seven got seven the game. blown out by Purdue, Yeah, which is another thing we didn't talk about. Dad Mata, we... Oh, my God, he's playing. Who? The guy who hurt his... Never mind, the guy who I said was going to be out for a long time, he's playing. When, when we went to Columbus, the first stop was Indy to interview Coach Mata, and when we were in the car driving to Columbus, we kind of were like... I want to release that interview right now. This is such a good interview. Yeah. After the Mata interview, we realized, like, okay, like, maybe we have a future in this because uh, if we can get really good guests, then we're mm-hmm. we're, uh, we're going to be set. But, yeah, Coach, uh, I owe Coach the world, obviously, for um, – Coaching make, you. Ma- yeah, well, for making my dream come true and playing Ohio State. But, I mean, he's a awesome, awesome guy. Him and his wife, they're they're both so, so great out in, out in Indy now. Um, and it's a great excuse to stop there every time I'm on my way to Columbus. But um, incredible interview by an incredible dude. Uh, an incredible basketball coach, and I think you get you guys tell me what you think. It sounds like he's having the itch to come back and and coach. So he's never been happier, but he definitely has a little bit of an itch. So, so you guys tell me what you think if you think he's going to come back or not, and you listen to this episode and and you let me know what you guys think. So. Yeah, tell us on Twitter. Uh, react to the interview on Twitter because it's a it's a long interview. It's a good interview, and we want to know what you have to say about it to be honest so without further ado we give you the all-time winningest coach in ohio state hoops history thad mata all right before we get to our interview with thad mata we wanted to talk for a moment about our new sponsor the official game day bar of the drive the lane podcast threes above high i'm sure you've seen us repping our threes gear the Buckeyes in basketball and football are undefeated when we wear our three shirts from High Street Tees. You know, like how we got sponsors that kind of work together. It's pretty cool. It's cute. Look at look at us. Look Who at us. Thought. Who would have thought? <laughs> the place to go for the college football playoff games. The place to go for Browns games. The place to go for Ohio State basketball games. Uh, back when I was in school, you know, once I got to the ripe age of 21, I loved heading over to threes, using the threes bus and – um, make sure you college kids take, take advantage of that because it's a, it's a pretty cool thing they got going on. Speaking of threes, John Diebler. All right, now <laughs> to our interview with Thad Mata. All right, we now welcome on to the Drive the Lane podcast an extremely special guest, none other than former Ohio State head coach Thad Mata. It's weird calling him Thad Mata because he's really just Coach Mata to me. <laughs> um, but I think he's most famous, and correct me if I'm wrong, for bringing me to Ohio State. That is true. And, and you know, you, you learn to live with your past mistakes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I no, honestly, that, that was uh, an amazing deal with your mom being a, an Ohio State graduate and, and you coming in. And, and uh, you know, as you stopped by this summer, it's, it's, it's amazing seeing the growth that you've made just as a person. And, and now you're into this. And it's unbelievable. Oh, geez. Well, it's early in the interview, so don't make me cry right at the beginning. <laughs> um, but Andrew... Hit them with some of the facts that we have. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that was a nice little joke that you're most famous for. But what is he really famous for? Ohio State, but five regular season Big Ten titles, four tournament titles, two Final Fours, and the winningest head coach in Ohio State history. Pretty impressive resume, if we do say. You you know, it's, it's funny because as you go through the process, you don't ever like grasp what's going on. And and when I was moving from Columbus, I was cleaning out my office in my house and I was just going through stuff. And I I called my wife and I said, hey, you know, I did all right as a coach. I had no idea. And and I think that's one of the the crazy things because uh, I I remember when we had played uh, for the national championship in 07 and we're getting ready to play our first game of the season. And Vince O'Brien, our trainer comes in the locker room, the team's out warming up. I looked at him, I said, do you realize we played for the national championship last year? <laughs> and because you just, you're on to the next thing. You, you never stop. And, and I've said this, you know, when you're out of coaching, when you're coaching, you only remember losses. I mean, I, I could tell you every loss we ever had at Ohio State and why we lost the game. But now that I'm not coaching, I remember the wins. 
and all the great memories that I, I had along the run. So of all the accomplishments, you know, now that you're looking back, you say you can remember them. Is there one specific specific accomplishment that you're like, wow, all right, that one meant a lot. That was awesome. Excluding Joey coming to Ohio. <laughs> okay. Excluding um. the arrival of Joe Smoke Lane. <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's, it's a great question. Um, and there's, there's so many great memories. And, and to, to single out, you know, people ask me all the time, like, who's the, your favorite all-time player that you coached? And there's so many of them because of, for so many different reasons. Um, you know, I, I can remember uh, uh, beating Memphis and San Antonio, going to our first Final Four. And we were, we were flying back, I think it was a Sunday afternoon, and it was probably 80 degrees in, in San Antonio, and the players are getting on the plane. And I just stood out there, and I'm like, wow, we're going to the Final Four. I, I, I can't believe this. Um, you know, I, I think one of the other great memories was Matt Sylvester shot my first year there when we beat Illinois. They were undefeated, 29-0. And um, because that, that really put a stamp on the program in terms of uh, the changes that we were making with the players. And we come back the next year and, and win our first Big Ten championship. Yeah, that's clearly, as a growing up as an Ohio State fan, that's probably my earliest memory is Sylvester hitting that shot. Because, like you said, like it's like an Ohio State is here moment. And like it's, we're not going anywhere. Right. And it's funny you mentioned that game because I think we've talked about this before. But growing up in Illinois... I was kind of rooting for Illinois because it was the cool thing to do. Right. Um, even though I was an Ohio State fan, you can that's ask anyone. Yeah, I was. No question. I was very fair weather. That's f- that's yeah. for sure. And I remember getting on the bus. I was in like third grade. I was getting on the bus, and I was like, <laughs> my friends are like, "Did you see the, the Ohio State game last night?" And I'm like, "I know, I'm pissed." <laughs> They're like, "What do you mean?" So that, but that is my earliest memory of Ohio State basketball being the powerhouse that now everyone knows it as and obviously that you yeah. brought that yeah um, we, what was funny is we greg odin mike conley daquan cook uh and david lighty were supposed to be at the game and daquan greg and michael had played that saturday night and won the regional sectional whatever uh here in indianapolis and that after we played like on tuesday night or whatever and i called the coaches to my house i was so nervous because I said, look, we just got to devise a game plan, plan to, to keep the game close. We can't get ran out of our own gym on national television. With all the recruits with the, coming. With all the recruits coming. So the coaches talked me into playing zone, start the game. So we're down 14 to 2. I called timeout, and I said, uh, you guys think we've tricked them enough? <laughs> why, why, why don't we just do what we do? And, uh, and then with you know 12.6 seconds ago, we, we take the timeout. And I said to the coaches, I said, well, what do you guys want to do? And they said, go down low to dials, because we're down two. Go down low to dials. Go down low to dials. I said, fellas, do you guys want to play these guys for five more minutes? I said, shit, we're going for the win. <laughs> I said, I, I want out of here. And uh, sure enough, Matt hit the shot. And, and, uh, but that, that was a great statement, as you said, for our program. Absolutely. So that, that's probably Joey, I guess, his first memory. Mine is a little, uh, little more centralized to you, playing Wisconsin. Gum falls out of your mouth onto the ground. <laughs> Pick it right back up, right back in. Why didn't you just get a new piece of gum? Well, <laughs> it's this is a true story. Okay, game ends. We that clinched the Big Ten championship. So we were having a big party uh, at my house back when I lived along the river. And uh, every time, every time I coach a game, driving home, I'd call my parents. My mom answers the phone, and she goes oh, my God, son. And I'm like, what? She goes, oh, my God, son. And I said, Mom, we won. She goes, I know you won. You dropped your gum and put it <laughs> back in your mouth. Now, we're, we're 45 minutes to an hour from the time the game ended. I had no idea it happened. I did not remember. So I, I said, did they show it on TV? And she goes, oh, yeah, <laughs> about a thousand <laughs> times, yeah. So... I go home, I turn on ESPN, and there I am. They got the telestrator with the gum coming out <laughs> and me putting it back. And I still to this day don't remember it. Now, with that said, that game was on a Sunday afternoon. On Tuesday morning, Wrigley's out of Chicago sent me, I don't know how much gum, and said, oh, the note from the president of the company said, if you ever drop your gum again, here's some extra. <laughs> so from that point, and, and I probably dropped it three or four times. Uh, in the huddle. Yes, yeah, when absolutely. You were, yeah, exactly. And it was on ESPN a number of times, even when I was there. Right. 
right. Yeah, it's uh, that was a, that's a great memory. That's something to be known about. I, I wish I'd been wearing like a Rolex or something, and they would have sent me a new Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's yeah, you there's dropped a Rolex. One on, there's that one on TV when you're in the huddle and it like falls out of your mouth and you hit it and it goes and finally you grab <laughs> it and you put it back in yeah. and in slow motion you're like. It's like you're playing catch yeah. with it, and then you finally grab it. Put you it know you've made it when you're on ESPN, not for your profession. I mean, you that's no, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, they just they just want to show you regardless. Yeah, it's big time. I remember we were playing here in Indianapolis uh, in the Big Ten tournament championship. We were playing Minnesota, and we were like trading buckets with them, trading buckets with them, and, and we had beat Illinois the day before in double overtime. That was the Evan Turner shot um, against Michigan uh, the day before that, and I was I take a timeout and I'm just going to fire them up. So I get down on one knee, and I'm going at him, you know, just trying to ignite uh, because both teams were physically exhausted. The game was terrible, and my gum comes out. <laughs> and I look down, and I look up, and the entire huddle just breaks out laughing. Lighty and, and Turner, John Diebler, and those guys. And I'll never forget, David Lighty looks at me and says, I got you. I, I'll, I'll take care of this. And, uh, and then we end up winning by 30. That yeah. is so awesome. I, you mentioned the Michigan game, and we, ha- I mean, we have to talk about you being the most fired up I've ever seen you when E.T. hits the shot. Not because he made the shot, but because of the ref who missed a call earlier, right? Well, uh, that gentleman had a really, really bad game. Yeah, okay? bad, everyone in, has bad in, games. Yeah, in my opinion, I thought it was uh, the worst thing I'd ever seen. Yeah. And <laughs> to so, put it lightly. Yeah, so Evan makes the shot. And I look over, they, they go to the scorer's table, and I look at, it was, I think, Brett Musburger and Steve Lavin, I think, I think we're calling the game, and I said, is it good? And they said, it's good. So I start to walk down to the scorer's table. Can you cuss on this show? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, that ref turns to me and says, you get back to the bench. And I said, that motherfucker is good. <laughs> <laughs> and walked off. Yeah. So, yeah, but he was, he was trying to stiff arm me. And I knew the game, because I asked myself, can I get a technical after the game? It's it over. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the, the, the deal there. So, Mizzou, rec- I went to the University of Missouri. <laughs> Mizzou recently had a coach, Kim Anderson, mm-hmm. okay, who, I'm going to try to put it lightly, is maybe one of the worst power five coaches in the history of the sport. <laughs> and he had basically already been fired. There were reports that Mizzou was parting ways with Kim Anderson. They are playing in the SEC tournament. And they beat Auburn at like a buzzer beater. And he walks into the crowd and he's like, shove it up there, fucking ass. <laughs> and this was, this was like literally like he'd been fired the day before. And every, all my friends were like, we're winning the whole SEC tournament. <laughs> and then they lost, lost by, by like 100. Yeah. Right, but, right. but immediately I was like, you don't know about the original shove it up there, fucking <laughs> ass. <laughs> Coach Mata against Michigan, not Auburn in the SEC tournament. So yeah. historic. Co- coaching, coaching can do some really, really weird things to a man's psyche. There's, there's no question about it. That's, I can only imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 100%. But if you're, if you're thinking of bizarre mo- – that's a bizarre moment because, mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, a half-court shot to win a game doesn't happen, but also you're yelling at a ref for winning the game, basically. Right. Is there right. any other – just bizarre coaching stories that you have? Oh, my gosh. Covered two good ones with yeah. the gum and the... Yeah. <laughs> you know, you probably remember that. Uh, when Alan Major was my assistant, mm-hmm. Kyle Madsen hit a baseline shot against Penn State, and it, it kind of, like, opened... You remember the, the games against Penn State? Oh, yeah. Always and won, but it was, like, just pulling teeth. Yeah, always. And, oh, no pun intended. Well, anyway, <laughs> Alan goes to, like, sh- you know, shake his fist and slips... And I looked down, and he, it's like he was breakdancing <laughs> on the floor. At the same time, when Kyle hit the shot, I chomped my gum real hard and broke my tooth. <laughs> so I'm standing there. I got my tooth in my hand. I'm looking at him laying on his back, like spinning on the ground. I'm like, man, this is a, this is a crazy <laughs> profession. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, was it at Penn State? No, it was at home. Okay, because when you go to Penn State, like, those games don't even count, really. Like, you don't, no, right. There's no one there to see them. And, like, they're always just, like, 52 to 48. Like, yeah. it's like they didn't even exist. But that was one of the best games when we were together, my freshman, sophomore year, when JT had a driving layup oh, basically at, shot. The, at the buzzer yeah. to win the game. We came in the locker room, and that was when we threw we threw water on each other in right. the locker room. And you come in, and you go, hey, fellas, dude, let's do that <laughs> shit again. And we're throwing water. Yeah, that was uh, – we finally got uh, Lyle to pass on that play. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 playing pretty darn well right now. Is I don't he? know if you're keeping up with the stats. Yeah, he's had like 
He's had 30 at least twice already this year, and he's a heck of a player. He's uh, the talent. Talented. I mean, just yeah. off off the charts. But yeah, I still still keep in somewhat good contact with him. I mean, right. he was always such a nice guy, especially to my family and stuff. I mean, right. great dude. We always got yep. along really, really well. That was just talk about bizarre things. The fact that I was the only. I didn't even count, first of all, when I came there as a freshman in that recruiting class, but then to be the only guy represented on senior night, right. I mean, that's pretty Unheard insane of. right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, now with the transfer rate, it's, it's crazy. God, it's, who knows? It's, yeah, but I guess that brings me to my next question. This is a little personal. Do you remember me coming to visit as a senior in high school at all? I do. You said that earlier. You said your mom went to well, that State. And- well, my mom wasn't there, but I always made fun of Sparts because um, Coach Paulus – he, GP, right. had, he didn't know who I was when I when I showed up on campus for the first time, and I would always make fun of him because I'd ask him where I went to high school, and he didn't know. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking you, because Sparks would tell me, like, we're sending, we, I'm I'm showing Coach Mata your tape, like, keep yep. sending it in. Did you actually see me play before I got I did. there? Yeah, I watched. You, uh, no, wow. it, was like, it was like wow. on a flight, uh, we were going to a game, and he handed me the, I think it was back on a DVD back then. <laughs> or maybe it was a computer. I, I know I watched it on a computer. Well, that, it, yeah. that just made my entire year. Because yeah. I know you, and I know you wouldn't lie to me about that, but I just thought, like, even like Bowles. Bowles would be like, yeah, I never saw you play when I got here. Right. I, know, I just thought it was like, eh, he's a little Jewish kid from Deerfield. We could use a little Jew on the <laughs> <I> team. Think, <laughs> yeah, my Jew crew in Columbus loved you. Exactly. I mean, they, they thought that was the best. That's who I do it for. Yeah. I think what I took the most out of that story is that you recognized that it was a computer and that you do in fact know <laughs> what a computer is i i do but like this tells you how technical technical i am like i didn't have a computer in my office i i couldn't turn that computer on over there <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to turn it on so yesterday i was supposed to go speak to a group of uh i think they're like fifth graders and they were doing like a college basketball and the teacher i went to school with her husband at butler so she said, you can come at 1240 or 155. So I e- email her back. I'll be there at 150. So I show up at, at 150, and the school lady says, you're supposed to be here at 1240. And I said, no, I, I emailed her. I don't even know how to send emails. <laughs> so it didn't go through. So I felt like the idiot. You know, the kids are crying. And all. No, I'm kidding you. <laughs> Uh, so I got to go back in two weeks and, and do it again. That's a big football guy thing to do. Are you familiar with what, what a football guy is? No. They only know their sport, and that's it. So, like, if right. you think of, like, Jim Harbaugh, he talks about, you know. Bad we, vibes. Yeah, we don't like Jim Harbaugh, obviously. But he talks about how he doesn't like to eat chicken because it's a, it's a what is he, what's the word he uses? Doesn't like, he say, like, a weak meat? Yeah, it's like a weak meat, like a pussy bird, basically. <laughs> so, like, that's a football guy thing. Just, like, you not knowing how to work a computer, right. why would you? You're a basketball coach. You don't yeah. need to work a computer. You know what's funny? The chicken is the only animal you can eat before it's born and after it's dead. Boom. Incorrect. Oh, what's the other one? Caviar and fish. Isn't caviar fish? Caviar's fish eggs. They're not right. born. Oh, yet. yeah. Oh. Really? But is yeah, you sushi. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Well, all fish is dead when you eat it. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you, do you know why fish are so skinny? Why? They eat fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. You know, he's, still, he's still got it, ladies and gentlemen. He's still got it. Pretty good at jokes. I think that might be... Because of a rumor that Joey told me, I heard you're uh, pretty good friends with Will Ferrell. Is that correct? Yeah, I've got to to hang out with him a couple times, and 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 I, I will say this: number one, he's like a huge well USC sports mm-hmm. right. enthusiast, but he is as funny just sitting and talking to him and not trying to be funny. But yeah, that I I love that guy. What's you, your favorite movie? Old school. That's, I mean, all-time yeah. classic. Old all-time school. classic. Should we give him a call? Or no, no, no. No, we better not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have his number. That's, that's so we'll get, we'll get back on the topic of coaching. Do you think, you think you've coached your last Division I game? You know, I don't know. Um, it, it's, it's a really, really good question. It's, it's funny because the first year I was out, like, I wanted nothing to do with basketball. Like, I, I might catch part of a game. Really didn't care. I, I always I get season tickets whenever I'm in town. I go to the Butler games. Um, last year I got got back into it, man. I was like, okay, got my pad of paper and I'm writing down actions and, and that sort of thing. Um, but I'm still wrestling with the bullshit. 
And, and that's what I've got to come to conclusion is, is do I want to do that again of, of uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, uh, you know, just the, all the things. I mean, you, you, you look at, since I've been out of the game, what has transpired in college basketball with the FBI and, and all this stuff. And, and uh, you know, I, I just, I, don't know, I, I, I was talking to the president of Butler, Jim Danko, the other day, and I said, you know, a school just gets on probation for recruiting violations. They dock them a scholarship, uh, find them recruiting days or whatever. And there's a high school here in Indianapolis, Southport, that just got banned from the state tournament for recruiting violations. Like, okay, if you break a violation, you can't go to the NCAA tournament. Right. You, things, things would change at that point. I mean, there's there's no doubt about that. It does just seem like, especially being on the outside now, that it's just like they're trying to scare you, but if it happens, they don't enforce anything. <laughs> right. Like, if they say they have tapes of Sean Miller offering uh, offering kids money, that isn't that enough evidence to do something? And they do, and they yeah. say, ah, I we'll think be. we I think we can use this. Sean Miller getting punished. <laughs> oh, you right. can't hear that. Yeah. You can't hear that. We have sound effects. It yeah. made up. It was a boom, boom, boom. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm, Sorry, I'm, I forgot you're not wearing a headset. You're like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I'm going to go on record. Sean is innocent. Um, Sean and I were, are great friends, so I'm, I'm going on record that I think Sean's Perfect. innocent. Perfect. I yeah. obviously have no idea, but I'm using that as an example. It's <laughs> no, funny. No, of no, course, no, no. I use it, the one guy from your coaching tree. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually know he's innocent, too. That's just the name Joey used, so I decided to use that one. But I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Right. No, it, it, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's insanity. I mean, it's, it is. Uh, it's uh, uh, amazing what, and you know what you start to see now is, is with all the younger guys in coaching, they panic. You know, and that's what I always loved about, like, Tom Izzo and, and Bo Ryan. And, you know, competitive as could be. I mean, they, they wanted to win, but they, they also wanted the betterment of a game. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they wanted, you know, like I always tried to help young coaches. Like, let's, let's build this thing up and let these guys eventually take it over. And, and uh, there's not a lot of guys like that, that, that uh, the welfare of the game is so much more important to them. It just goes to show how impressive guys like you, Izzo, Bo Ryan were because they were doing it the right way. Right. And not to, you know, incriminate anyone else, but the some of the schools that are winning the national championship going to the Final Four, you know, you look at Auburn versus, um, you know, uh, Chris Beard at Texas Tech and Michigan State, you know, right. it's two ends of the spectrum. Pearl's already gotten in trouble, and he's going to the Final Four. It just goes to show how much maybe more impressive it is that guys are doing it the right way and getting into the Final Four. Right. You no. know, it's just, it, it to me... It seems like, okay, if a school gets in trouble and they have to let go of a coach, there's no one better than you to bring it back and doing it the right way. Right, right. No, and that's something that uh, it, it can be done. Like what, what Chris is doing at Ohio State right now is, is phenomenal. And, um, and he's, he's doing it the right way. He's, he's getting the type of kids that he can coach. And uh, I think that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it is really – it's cool because it, I – you know, people ask me all the time because I'm, I'm in the guts of it. Like, right. are, are we cheating? And obviously, I, if we were, I wouldn't tell them. But I, it's, I get to say, you know, like, I played for two of the best coaches in the country both doing it the right way. Like, there's something to say about that in, right. in the college basketball world, you know, today. Yep. Well, you tell that story about D'Angelo Russell. I think you said it at your Hall of Fame yeah, yeah, speech. Yeah. It actually went viral. That's when, like, a lot of people on social media see it. Oh, That's really? Like going viral. Is that, viral? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Does that mean like uh, uh, YouTube or, or iCloud or <laughs> yeah, it's Snapchat sure, sure, yeah. and all yeah, that yeah, stuff? Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll help you make a Twitter after this interview. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? Guys have been on me about that. They're like, you need a Twitter account. We can help you, and your first tweet can be a picture of the three of us. <laughs> yeah. like, but what I mean, I would love for you to kind of just highlight that story a little bit because it is an amazing story. Yeah. Well, you know, D'Angelo was. It, when I talked about him at that dinner, I talked about loyalty because he gave me his word that he was coming to Ohio State, uh, I think it was June 3rd, going into his senior year. And I knew how good D'Angelo Russell was. And, and I, I thought, you know, this kid has a chance. Because he never lost. He won in everything he was doing, and he would dominate games. So long story short, we got to the, the signing date that just took place last week in November mm -hmm. or whatever. And... His dad said, hey, we're, we're not going to sign the papers. And we had just won a game, and everybody was signing the next day, but he wasn't going to. 
So I called Angelo. Do I need to get that? No, you're good. Is that you or is that me? I think it's me. All right. Do you need to get it if you want to get it? No, I bet it's your cousin, Scott Wiseman. (laughs) Well, I just want to make sure it's not me so the video's not interrupted. No, it's me over there. Oh, all right. Then we're good. And don't get it. Right. Okay. (laughs) So long story short, I called Angelo and said, hey, your dad's not going to sign the papers. He says, I don't care. I'm I'm signing them tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And then it came out, you know, they – his dad thought about it, and the money was coming in. People, agents, schools were, were trying to persuade them. And, you know, to D'Angelo's dad's credit and to D'Angelo, they said, no way. Because I told him, I said, you're going to get it on the back end. you got to trust me. You're, you're one of the greatest players I've ever recruited. And, you know, sure enough, uh, six months later, he was getting it on the back end. Yeah, talk about the back end. I mean, the dude is... It was worth it. Yeah, one hundred percent. No question. And, well, he just signed a huge, and he just signed, signed a huge, trade extension too. Yeah, yeah and a huge sneaker yeah. deal too. He just. I know. Uh, my daughter sent me a. Uh, he's yeah, Dwayne Wade's Dwayne replacement. Wade. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's the face of, and of ET, him and ET. It's it's crazy. It's unbelievable. That's weird. It yeah. is kind of weird, isn't it? But yeah. but yeah, it's he obviously is is doing in, incredible. But you mentioned that he's one of the best guys you ever saw recruiting. We've had this conversation a hundred times, but who are some other names when you were recruiting, whether you whether they committed to Ohio State or not, that you were just like, for sure, not only is he going to be a great college player, but he's going to the NBA also. Well, you know, the, the greatest player I've ever seen, I did not see LeBron coming out of high school or in high school, uh, maybe on TV once or twice, but Greg Oden was the most dominating uh, – I'd never in my life seen anything like him. So I, 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 he's an anomaly in terms of, of players that I coach. But, like, you know, I knew Michael Conley. I, I watched Michael play three times when he was freshman or sophomore. And the first three times, I didn't know if he was right-handed or left-handed. And I'm like, that kid's got a chance. So I remember when those guys showed up their freshman year in the summer, and J.J. Solinger comes in my office and says, hey, the little guy that came with Odin, he's pretty good. And I said, no, he's the best point guard in the country. <laughs> and he's like, no. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm telling you. So when Michael took off, I, I was not shocked at all. Um, you know, I, I'll give you a great story because, like, you know, Evan Turner goes on to become player of the year. But, like, when I recruited Evan out of St. Joe's, um, he didn't do anything great. But he did everything well. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, those were the type of guys that, uh, you know, you we, we – had a heck of a run with him, to his credit, how hard he worked when he got to Ohio State. Um, I'm trying to think who else was – was uh, Jared was – was He literally was one of the best players in the country. Yo, gosh. I mean, yeah. regardless of class coming up. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember, they showed his games on TV all the time. It right. was incredible. Yeah, well, I remember going to uh, Orlando, and they had a morning game, the quarterfinals, and he went for 25 and 15. So I called the guy. I said, man, he was unbelievable. I said, he can't do it again. So that afternoon, he goes for 30 and 17. I'm like, you guys aren't going to believe this. <laughs> I said, he just went for 30. And then, so I'm like, okay, he's going to the, the championship game that night. Third game of the day, he goes for like 39 and 20 or oh something. I'm gosh. like, but he was just, he was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, <clears throat> do you, and maybe it's even, but do you take more pride when you see a guy like Sellinger well, he was two years, but a guy like Russell, Odin, uh, Conley, those guys that come in, play for one year, probably learned a ton, grew a ton being at Ohio State, and then take off and succeed in the NBA? Or do you feel like more accomplished when a guy like Aaron Kraft comes in, plays four years, and then goes and succeeds overseas after? Yeah. It, it, it both are extremely gratifying. And, and you know, I, I was talking with a school last spring, and they said, if you could bring – or I told them, I said, if I could bring one player that I coached at Ohio State, I said, this is going to sound great. I said, I would bring Aaron Kraft. And I said, here's why. He's academic All-American, National Scholar Athlete of the Year. He's a four-year point guard, and he's, he's one of the greatest students. Now, yeah, you want the one and dones and, and that sort of thing. The, the only thing with the one and dones, like I never had an issue with one and dones as long as they had both feet in mm-hmm. until the final horn. You know, those guys that we had a couple that were out the door, it, it, it disrupted the team. It disrupted the, 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 the program. Um, and, and it's funny because they tell me now that I made a mistake. You know, but but it's not it's not them. It's the people in their ears right. and, and uh, you know, that are, are doing all those things. 
do you did you hear the other day? Um, Coach Holman was asked in a press conference, "Do you think Caleb Wesson is playing for the NBA and not for Ohio State?" And Holtman, like he very level-headed guy, mm-hmm. was clearly mad about the question and said, "Because right. Caleb's taking a lot more threes this year." Right. And Holtman said, "Look, he's I've never he's basically was like I've never had a guy be this into a team, and he especially I've been around Caleb. He is astronomically getting more two feet in right. every day." And he's shooting more threes because that's how Ohio State's going to win. And right. he, and you can't get those two things confused because in this day and age, it's easy to think that certain guys are looking towards the future and certain right. guys are playing for you know the culture for the team for their right. brothers. And it's unique when you get a guy like Greg Oden who is one hundred percent doing both. Right. Yeah. No. That and, and what, what's amazing is they're the ones that do the best. Mm-hmm. And and enjoy the the experience, you know. I, it, it's like when I'd ask those guys that were one and done. I said, "What do you miss the most about college?" And they said they would always all of them college. I miss going to class. I miss being around the student body. I miss you know that sort of thing. And and uh, now they love their paychecks. Right. They, there's no doubt about that. But I, I thought you were going to uh, say they asked Chris about load management. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? No, I didn't see that. You didn't see Archie Miller's press conference? Oh no, I. I should though. What did he? What did he say? He, well, they asked him about. I can only assume what he's going to yeah. say. You weren't there when Archie was with us at Ohio no. State. Oh, best, the best, and and the way he answered this question was Archie Miller to a team, mm-hmm. and uh, so we'll have to pull it up after the. All right, after absolutely. The show. Yeah, I can. I can only. Ima- I can only imagine what the answer to <laughs> yeah. that mm-hmm. question was. But yeah. the coolest thing was Anthony Davis asking about low management. He was like, "If I'm healthy, I'm going to play." Same with James Harden. Like that's cool. Ironically, this morning of old college buddy of mine sent me an article about the top 40 greatest NBA players. Mm-hmm. And they, they came up with this right mathematical all-time. All time, uh, uh, top 20 in the last 40 years. Okay. And number three, they, this is all statistically based, was John Stockton. Wow. And they had in there, John Stockton played in 1946 games and only missed 22 in 19 years. It's insane. Yeah. Iron Man. The lo- like the, I mean, LeBron James is a freak. Right. But the fact that he is the best player in the NBA in year 17, it's the same oh, kind of deal. I mean, that yeah. dude, mm-hmm. night in, night out, is bringing it. Reg- you don't know if he's healthy or not, but it sure <laughs> seems like he is. What's your, uh, what's your relationship with LeBron like? Because he's been to Ohio State yeah. around the program a lot. Not as much now, but right. <clears throat> especially definitely not. Definitely right, not, definitely not, not now. Didn't see him. But especially <laughs> early on when he was bringing the shoes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. LeBron was always very, very supportive um, in terms of you know labeling the LeBron gear um, that we had to deal with Nike. Um, you know, the year they had the lockout, oh gosh, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, yeah. he came down and practiced with us. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. I, would, I don't, well, I don't think you would have would. gotten to play, Joey. I don't think so either. <laughs> no, I mean, it was, I remember William Buford told me one day after practice, we had had like a scrimmage segment and, and he goes, yeah, you know, Will. Yeah, of course. Like, Damn, coach. He says, I go home and play him on the Xbox. <laughs> he goes, I didn't know he could actually do that stuff. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but, no, I, I, you know, LeBron was, was always, you know, he was at some games when he could be there. And, and um, it, was, it was just good to have him part of the program. Mm-hmm. So you've been out of coaching for a little while. Mm-hmm. You said that you were writing down schemes and stuff mm-hmm. like that last year. So I think the door could still slightly be open. Let's say you get back into recruiting, mm-hmm. okay, you come to my living room, all right? I'm an undersized four, but a, but a five right. star. Right, how, okay. How are okay. you pulling me to, let's just pick a random school. Let's say you, I'm trying to think of someone who's got a hot seat coach. Every, let's say Bruce Pearl gets, gets <laughs> in trouble again and you go to Auburn, which the SEC's got some high caliber coaches right now. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. But I'm sitting your you're sitting in my living room. You're five foot ten. Five foot ten. Undersized, undersized stretch four. four. Stretch four, okay. I can shoot the three. I can back down when they put a smaller guy on me. <laughs> okay. How are you recruiting me? I'd, or are you <laughs> recruiting? Me? I'd probably be drunk. Uh, if, if I was, you know what, Andrew? There's, there's not a scholarship <laughs> open, but we've had some great walk-ons. If I, <laughs> oh, I'm adding one more thing. I want $100,000. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. There's, there's the ask. Uh, um, no, I, I, I think from the standpoint of, of saying, hey, we're, nothing's going to be given to you. We're going to run this program the right way. 
when you leave here, you're going to be a better person, you're going to be a better man, and you're going to be able to survive in life. The basketball side of it, we're going to bust your ass. I mean, we're, we're going to work. Um, we're going to get after it every single day. Um, but I like guys that like challenge. Best players I've, I've ever dealt with. You know, what's funny is none of them ever wanted to be recruited. The, the best players I ever coached, they didn't want to deal with the recruiting process. They're like, heck, I, I got to get like D'Angelo, Grego, Michael. Those guys were the easiest guys I've ever recruited. So I'm assuming that this would be an easy sell <laughs> exactly. for you. Yeah. Exactly. All right, I'm in. Okay. Bingo. <laughs> Let's do it. You're first, you're first make, for that. make Auburn basketball great again. Yeah. Even though they were Final Four Final last Four year, team. but make right. Auburn right. basketball right. great Okay, again. we're going with the Trump slogan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just okay. just what they need. Um, a five a five ten stretch four. Yeah. He's like Jay Sean Tate with a jump shot. That's what he is. Okay. Well, I told I told Sellinger I was like I was like, dude, you don't understand. Like you were you're my favorite player ever. I'm right. like I was this size in seventh grade. <laughs> I'm like, and that's when you were good. When I was I was like I was you. I was like I, I was like you don't understand. Like I like. I idolized you as best. I'm like, and now you're all skinny. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, you gotta right. get back to when I idolized you. But and and then you know that I loved Aaron Kraft mm-hmm. for the same reasons I wore four in high school for him. I mean, I funny enough, I had his locker, and no no one had it the year in between me and Aaron. Um, and then I had it when I got there, which was I still I still have his like tapes of like um, Frazier from Penn State and like all right. these all these guys and like. Now me and Kraft are friends. Like it's just funny how that all works. But I, right. I'm bringing him up for a reason because you shared the greatest Aaron Kraft story ever. The last time we were together about him and Butler, yeah. Would, and I would love for you to elaborate on it. Well, Brad doesn't want me to tell the story. Uh, <laughs> Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens. Yeah, but humble uh, brag. Yeah, I think, <laughs> friends with I think Brad he's, Stevens. he's uh, doing okay. But Aaron came to visit unofficially Butler. He was telling me this story, and fell in love with the campus, and he was walking around, and he taps his dad and says, hey, I'm going to commit. I, this, is, this is where I want to go. I don't, I don't, we hadn't offered him yet. If I'm not, I, yeah. So they go back into Brad's office, and Brad says, I want to thank you guys for coming over. We'll be in touch. So Aaron says, I, I walk out. <laughs> I said, Dad, what, what just happened? He goes, son, Brad Stevens doesn't think you're good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, it was, a, and, and Brad had justification of why they couldn't take him because Brandon Miller was leaving the next day to come back to Ohio State with us. Brandon was the lead recruiter. He thought he was going to go to Ohio State anyway. And, well, yeah, so. You can see the future. But, yeah, uh, I mean, that kid turned out to be all right. Yeah, yeah, safe to say uh, I think all of our lives would be a little bit differently if he went to Butler and not. No question. It's crazy. Uh, mine would be pretty similar. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> One less interview for the podcast. If we're, other than that, though. Yeah. yeah. If we're if we're talking Aaron Kraft, we also I keep we keep going back um, to the fact that he should be in the NBA. You, I know you think that Archie Diakono is in the NBA and Aaron Kraft is not. Seriously. I after watching that. No offense, uh, Archie. T, <laughs> TBT. What was it? Yeah, TBT. TBT? Uh-huh. Yeah. I called his agent next morning. I was, I was in Florida, and I said. Lance, there has to be one team. What, the one spot. On one, one, team. one spot, 12 spot. Like, I, I said, look, start with the Lakers. Like, they need dudes. Call, call LeBron and say, look, he's not going to shoot. He's not going to turn it over. He's, his man will not score. I, I, and everyone will love him. And everybody will love him. Yeah. It's and just a um, no-brainer. Yeah, un, un, unbelievable. And they, take, and they take Avery Bradley, who's basically him. I just don't yeah. think Kraft has the work ethic. <laughs> Uh, you know, he did just tear his uh, meniscus. No. Yeah, Whoa. just had surgery, and, and um, but he's, he's only out for a little bit. I, yeah, uh, my, that guarantees you one more season, and then yeah. another. <laughs> I always joke that he has the record for most times that he said, all right, one more this year. is my last season. Right. You know, he's got, all right, right, next year I'm going to medical school. This yeah. is my last season. Okay, this is my last and year. And then no. your the farewell news. tour, start it now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But you could be a doctor playing the TBT every summer. Yeah. He will do that probably. Yeah. Well, I think he did his own surgery. <laughs> I mean, Would you be surprised? I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Oh, my I've gosh. Never, I've never had anybody like him. Well, yeah. he probably would be like, whoever the doctor is is not good enough. I'm doing, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the surgery. But Even though in reality, if he hasn't gone to medical school yet, he's probably not ready to perform surgery. Yeah. No, but he, the only thing that matters is he knows why his cheeks get so rosy. Yeah. He we, knows asked that he, we asked him the term. We don't, I don't remember it off the top mm-hmm. of my head, but he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've known that since my mm-hmm. you know, freshman year in college. Well, so. were you on the boat game that never happened? 
were no, that was my senior year in high school. Oh, I remember that. Okay, that was so weird. yeah, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And <laughs> the boat Aaron, game that never happened. Yeah, it was a great warm up. Uh, but Aaron, the officials and and Buzz Williams and I are talking about like I don't know we can play. Well, Aaron comes over and says, <laughs> "Fellas, here's what happened." <laughs> from the day got the wood hot when the cold air came in it caused uh, whatever which is causing the floor to participate uh, uh, precipitate precipitate <laughs> and like he's using all these words and this ref looks at me and I said oh no he knows what he's talking about he's smarter than any of us out here I mean what I what all the things I loved about coaching Aaron the one thing I hated is when I do my board work before the game if I misspelled a word he's calling you out on it he would call me out on it Every single time. And I, like, I just messing with you. I meant to do that. Yeah, good. I before E, except after C. I, I, <laughs> it's just, it's just, you're like, Aaron, I'm keeping you on your toes. Like, if you're going to go to medical school, after a career in professional basketball, like, someone's got to keep you on your toes. Right. Yeah, no question. I want to I wanna ask one, like, very serious question. Okay. <laughs> um, we've been kind of joking, but we've had a lot of fun. Uh, what were those first maybe weeks or months like when you initially – we're away from the game for the first time in however many years. The season or like the next day? I guess, uh, I guess both. Well, I, I'll say this. I started waking up in a great mood, and I hadn't woken up in a good mood in, in 17 years. So that was like the best. You know, one of my neighbors um, back in, in Ohio told a friend of mine, He's in the pool every day. <laughs> now, we used to never hear him in the swimming pool. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing I, I was, my biggest concern at that point was trying to get uh, my coaches taken care of. Mm -hmm. and, and just in terms of, of trying to find them employment and, and, and that sort of thing. The timing was crazy, like yeah. also unheard right. of. Yeah, no, no question. Um, I think from the standpoint, I, I remember uh, uh, the first game I went to. And I was just telling Tim Miles a story the other day. He was in to call a Butler game. And Butler was playing Kennesaw State. They're up 25 at halftime. They win the game. It's a Friday night. They win the game by 26. Played terrible in the second mm -hmm. half. Well, they got Princeton on Sunday afternoon, which you know Princeton is always a tough preparer. You need time to right. get ready for them. They run the Princeton offense, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Look at this guy. Sharp. <laughs> Five foot ten, stretch four. <laughs> but – as I watched Laval go down to shake, I think it was Al Skinner's hand, and my wife says to me, she goes, well, your first game, how do you, how do you feel? And I said, you know what's amazing? Right now I'm looking at Laval, and I'm saying, what would be going through my mind? And it's simply, do I go in and rip my team's ass for only outscoring them by one point second half, or do I build them up because I know they got to be ready to go on Sunday to play Princeton? But either way, I'm going home and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and you don't have to do either one of those. And I don't have to worry about that. And uh, so, you know, it, it, you kind of go back and forth. Like, I, I – Barbara tells me that I tell her things are going to happen before they happen in the game. She's like, how do you know? I'm like, well, you yeah. – 25 years as a coach, and, and Lord knows how many tapes that you've watched of games and, and that sort of thing. It just it, it becomes – so I haven't lost my instinct, that's for sure. I was I was in Israel, and I got, like, a Bleacher Report notification that said, like, Thad Mata to hold press conference in, like, 20 minutes or something like that. I texted Joey. I was like, what the hell is going on? He's like, dude, I don't know. I was – I I'm sure you remember. I was home. I had just had surgery yeah, on my hernia. Yeah, you were like, I'm home. I, I was I'm like, not there. I was like, I'm not there. Uh, I don't know what to do. I was like – I, I went to take a nap, and I got the alert on my phone, and, like, I, was, I wasn't, like, bedridden, but I wasn't leaving my house because I, I just had surgery. I right. texted my dad and my brother. I'm like, Joey doesn't know. Let's see what happens. I'm, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm on pain meds. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on anyway. Uh -huh. I mean, it's That's just, right. Your hernia. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, the hernia. Devastating the, to the, the team. The good old days. <laughs> yeah, someone was, yeah, yeah, someone was telling me, they're like, man, it's amazing that you were never injured. And I was like, yeah, I didn't play. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean I didn't get Iron injured? Man? Stockton. But Stockton, yeah. yeah. yeah right. when, when he first got there, he used to get his bell rung. <laughs> Every practice. Every practice. Like, he'd be going sideways. I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah. But to his credit, he just kept going right back at it. Yeah. I, Kyle Davis – somehow that gets brought up every time I'm back. He's like, I'll never forget your first three weeks of practice. Like, you got screened harder than anyone <laughs> I've, ever gets, I've ever seen get screened. Yeah. Oh, man. Do Coach. You, or go ahead, Joe. I was just going to say, if we're on the topic of that, do you have any other Joey Lane memories you want to share? 
Yeah, I, I do. Because um, I have I, one that I, I want to I think see if you remember. I think we're going to tell the same one. I never, ever, when, when I was in college, Coach Collier, who lives right across the street, used the to run Coach us. Coach Carter? No. From the movie? No, no, Collier. <laughs> oh, Barry Collier. He, he was my coach at Butler. And at the end of every practice, he would run us, conditioning. 20 minutes of it. So I vowed never to make my team run sprints. I, I, I was going to find another way how fast we practiced, and there would always be a ball involved. So, Andrew, one day I lose my mind. <laughs> and, and that team had the ability to, to make me lose my mind. So Whew. I get mad, and I said, get on the line. And I said to myself, I'm going to run until somebody throws up. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I hear this, rah, rah, his head's in the trash can. <laughs> it's Joey. Which then made me madder because I wasn't mad at him. Yeah, I was sitting out the whole practice. That's why yeah. I'm throwing up because I have, I have no wind. I was mad at, like, you know who I was mad at. Yeah, and, X, Y, and Z. And, yeah. And, and he's the one. So then I say, he's paying $40,000 to throw up. You, I'm giving you $40,000. Oh, yeah. that was. I don't know if that was your memory. That's not. That's a great one. That was so funny because Jake Diebler came over to me and goes, Joey, you got it. You got to go downstairs. Like, this is not about you. Like, you, you got you to go downstairs. But I have two now because that just makes me think of another one. So the first one is Northwestern, my freshman year, our third game of the Big Ten season. We're up nine with 40 seconds left. They've called the dogs off. They're not going to foul. They haven't subbed anyone out. Dave D yells at me that I'm going to the yeah. game. I'm like, I double check. Lorbach tells me to go in. So I go in, and I'm walking, and I'm running to the scores table. You grab me by my jersey, and you whisper in my ear, don't fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, how could I? And then, and then I dribble out the clock, and I'm a hero because all my friends and family are there. That's right. I think your mom was crying. Okay, that's my second story. So the yeah. next story is um, s- mm, yeah, either freshman or sophomore year at Maryland. We get absolutely oh God. hammered. We were... We were, it, was, it was a really good game for the first, like, 18 minutes of the first half. Then yep. they went on, like, a 13-0 run to end the half. Long story short, we lose by, like, literally, like, 40. Yeah. Good job, coach. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And after the game, your rant, you don't – and for people who don't know Coach Mata, he doesn't – you don't like to yell. You don't right. want to yell. Right. Um, but this called for a time for you to yes. be upset with us because – And I remember this up. to a T. And you were yelling at us, and your rant turned into – Basically, why can't you guys be like Joey Lane? Right. He works his butt off. He's not getting paid to be here. He, and then you said, when I put him in the Northwestern game, Joey's dad came up to me at the bus and was crying tears of joy for you putting him in the game, which he wasn't. But it, <laughs> made the story better. It made the story right. better. But my dad, every it, does, it doesn't matter whenever we go to a Northwestern game, whenever we see them playing, he goes... Do you remember when you told me that Coach Ma said that I was crying after the <laughs> Northwestern game? I said, Dad, it's, he's just getting his point across. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I remember that to a T. Because I asked, I said, who's, who's the one guy, everyday guy, who works the hardest, who never, says, never causes me a problem? And they all said, Joey. I said, he's paying his own way. Yeah. Like, you got to be kidding me. What's wrong with you guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> obviously – that, that speech didn't work super well. Right. But, no, no, no. no but question. that's my fault, not your fault. <laughs> no. But no. who knows? I mean, maybe you, you, pay, you play me a little bit more. I mean, who knows what, what could have happened in my career. Yeah, Ooh, maybe 298 that, comes but a that's, little sooner. <laughs> no question about that. But 298 was my first game ever, oh, and, and I didn't play. So that answers that question. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, to say I'm forever indebted to you is obviously that's an understatement for not only – you know, getting me to my dream school, but also putting me on scholarship, which right. clearly wasn't about my ability. So, I mean, that goes a, a long, long way, obviously. But, you know, the one thing I've learned in being out of it is the impact you had on the team was, was worthy, was scholarship worthy. You know, I, I, I see this now. Um, I see coaches put guys in a game, and they're not as good as the guys that they come out, but they do what the hell they're supposed to do, and the team gets better. I, I I love that. I, I mean, I, I think that there's there's so much to that now, um, just in terms of, of guys doing the right thing and and all in the the you know twelve oars rowing in the right direction. Yeah, it's it is you know a huge point that especially in college basketball, you know, in the NBA, guys can win you games. Right. You right. Know, no question. A guy like LeBron James, James Harden, even like Luka Doncic, like they can win you a game. 
in college, it's there might be one or two guys in the entire NCAA that could do it, maybe. Right. So it goes to show you that, you know, you know, a fist, when it's five guys working together, right. is stronger than, you know, one finger. And that is best shown in college basketball because you might, your best lineup isn't always going to be the five most talented guys. Absolutely. Which is, you know, if you look at an Ohio State compared to a Duke, mm-hmm. you know, Ohio State consistently could have a better five – but it's not the most talented five. Right. And that wins in college basketball. Which Absolutely. Is, which is what, what makes college basketball so awesome. Yeah. Totally agree. You know, we've been talking for almost 50 minutes now, so don't want to keep you too long, but I wanted to make sure if there's anything that you want to say or talk about that feel free to go ahead and do it, maybe announcing your comeback or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I think we've just about covered everything. It sure seems we? like it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I just I, I'm wondering if that thing is actually recording. I hope it's still recording. All this high tech uh, stuff you guys have here. This is working because okay. we can hear you. Yeah. We can hear each other. See it ticking. So and if it's not, you're off the hook. So there, it's, yeah, because I'm it's not doing fun. this damn thing over. <laughs> told, we, we were recorded for like an hour with Kraft and Diebler, and at the end, I was like, "Oh shit, guys!" They were like, "What?" I was like. I didn't hit record. <laughs> <laughs> and I, they were like, okay. But I was like, what? You're like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, these are my friends. Like, Andrew, these are my friends. You're supposed to impress them. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no. Like, no. <laughs> we made them sing, uh, remember that party in the USA? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We I made, know. we didn't make, but we had. We offered them. We to offered sing. them the opportunity, Kraft, Diebler, and Sully, to sing Party in the USA. It was us. pretty funny. It was funny. Ironically, I heard that song the other day. Yeah, just put and, your hands up. And I. I <laughs> All, all of a sudden, it, I went back to that, of, of them singing that on a bus. And I'm like, God, that's awful. I didn't know that it had gone viral. viral. Oh, my God. Yes. Huh? Let's yeah. go. Went up to the iCloud. And, uh, and down to the iSoil. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. And now the iEarth. Yes. yes. Yeah. So yeah, when you gave me your, your address to come here, which I didn't need because I've been here before, you told me it was on planet Earth. So thank you for <laughs> making yeah. that distinction because you never know. Yeah, exactly. I said United States of America, Indianapolis, <laughs> United States of America, planet Earth. I, I didn't know. I just want to make sure you knew where I was. Yeah, I w- it's very funny because if I take a left turn, I end up at Mars. So that it's good. That, yeah. 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 All right. All right, Coach. This is Coach been, Mata, thank I mean, you so oh, much. Thank this you. was so much fun. Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for coming on. The first of many times on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a whole lot going on. Hey, me neither. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, that interview was not only amazing for me personally, if you, you know, I tried not to cry the whole time, but uh, <laughs> I hope you guys at home enjoyed it because that was the most fun and intriguing and interesting interview that we've been a part of probably, right? I really hope that that fun, interesting, intriguing man gets back to the sidelines. I hope that he does whatever makes him happy because uh, he I've never seen him happier and more glowing than he was when we um, met with him. He loves um, what he's doing, where he is, who he's with. Um, if he if he one day wakes up and boom, he wants to coach again and, and is really excited about that, then I'm happy for him and I would love him to do that. What do you think the market would look like if right now he – hypothetically had a Twitter if he tweeted I want to coach college basketball again I, well, I think what do you, he, do you think he, there would be programs firing their coaches in hopes to get him I think so yeah and I th- as long as his health is straight away and you know passes all those tests I think he'd be like one of the top five targets like for any school mm-hmm. you know I think like a school like any big school that isn't relevant would be dumb to not bring him in, or at least try to, regardless of if he says he wants to coach or not by the end of this year. So um, we'll see what happens with that. But um, we have a nice little break in terms of Ohio State athletics this week. Um, Ohio State basketball doesn't play until the 15th. Ohio State football obviously doesn't play until the 28th. Eighth. So uh, we'll have a fun episode so for yeah. you Monday, though. Uh, obviously, we won't have any game recaps. Right. There won't be any. Not, there won't be anything to recap. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll have someone not to do with sports and talk about something not to do with sports. Like a movie star or something like a, cool like, like a that. movie star, like a teen pop sensation. <laughs> um, <laughs> or like... I don't think... Or like a former Ohio State basketball player. I don't think the world is ready for uh, Walk on Jesse Chronicles McCarthy? Part 2 oh. yet. <laughs> Jesse McCarthy. <laughs> Walk on Chronicles Part 2 is in the works, but it's not ready to be released. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah. Um, in the works meaning we just know who's on. 
and yeah. we know we want to do yeah. another one. <laughs> and we will do another one. But, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed that interview because we enjoyed it. Um, we might have just peaked, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, this is actually the last episode. Yeah, so <laughs> See you guys. Thank you guys for, uh, for listening. For riding along with us. Ah, oh, that's the wrong. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, whatever. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah. uh, as we said earlier. We did probably just peak. As we said earlier, Christmas, Hanukkah, all those holidays are coming up. Get some high street tees gear. Get some threes gear. That would that would be a double double whammy for us. If, yeah, you, if go, you guys want to wet our beak, we're trying to wet our own beaks, but if you guys want to wet our beak for us, you buy a threes shirt from High Street Tees and use code DTL15. I mean, like, we Andrew will drive over to your house and give you a kiss on the cheek. Oh, yeah, definitely. If you're lucky, never mind. But <laughs> you'll, you'll get at least a <laughs> cheek kisser. Um, yeah, and speaking of, of cheek kissing, we also will – be having a shirt soon from High Street Tees. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, we mentioned it earlier, but we act we absolutely will have one. It I think it'll look pretty much the same as the one you guys have seen us wearing. If you really want to wet our beaks, then you'll buy that one. Because, yeah, uh, because yeah. We'll if you go to Threes and watch the game, send us a picture, and we'll like the tweet. And after we like the tweets, send us your address, and Andrew will drive over and, and give, give you a kiss on the cheek. Give you hundred dollars. <laughs> a kiss on the cheek. No, I will not be giving you. Pocket. I will not be giving you hundred dollars. But send us if you send us a picture of a high street T-shirt that you're wearing. That's one point. If you are wearing that shirt, that's two points. If you're wearing that shirt in threes, that's four points. And if you're wearing a drive the lane shirt, eventually that's ten points. If you're wearing a, dr- if you show us proof of you purchasing the drive the lane shirt, and then. Um, Going to threes and watching a game and and have a picture of you wearing it then that's ten points and that's when Andrew flies out to you and yeah it will fly dollars. you in and you get to sit here for a taping of the episode yeah wouldn't that be something <laughs> all right anyway um buckle up it's been our pleasure buckle up drive the lane thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buckeye Key with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.